I love y'all, man. Welcome to God Chasers. Thank you so much. If you're here for the first time, we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for being here. And if you're watching online, thank you so much. We appreciate you. In fact, we're going to start clapping right now. Those claps are for you, amen. Those claps are for you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. And if you're online or if you're in here, do me a favor, turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles to John, the book of John, the book of John, the book of John, and we're going to turn our Bibles to the book of John, and we're going to open them up to the 12th division of that book, 12th division of the book of John. Y'all with me today? Y'all doing all right? Good. See, y'all tired now. Y'all been singing the whole time, standing up. Y'all like, okay. <laughs> but I want to help you. Can I help you a little bit? On this Palm Sunday, this Palm Sunday, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Early on Sunday morning before Jesus was to die, the Bible says he rode into Jerusalem on a, on a, on a donkey. And we pay a lot of attention to the ride that Jesus took. <laughs> pay attention to the palm leaves they threw down the Bible said they threw down palm leaves and they said uh, hallelujah hail to the king and they and they and they they held his triumphant entry but there was a, a donkey present <laughs> and I'm just happy to, today that Jesus gonna ride in on my shoulders I don't know about you but I, I want to be the donkey that Jesus rode in on I could use a different phrase but I'm trying to help the visitors today I'm not special. Nothing special about me. Chosen. In fact, the Bible says that there was a it's, it's, it's some theological sort of stuff going on here, but the Bible said that there was a, a, a another donkey tied up. And so there's two donkeys. Here, this is for y'all preachers. There's a there's two jackasses. One of them is tied up, and the other one is for Jesus' use. They both jackasses. Don donkeys, donkeys. My wife is here. I'm sorry. She gonna get me in church. She like Dante. One of them, one of them is useful. The other one is tied up. I don't want to be tied up. I want to be useful. I want to be useful. No difference. The, the, the DNA is the same. Same animals. One of them is tied up. And some, some, some theologians, you know, you would take that and you would say tied up like, like he was literally locked. He was dealing with something locked into something. Sometimes our addictions just look like us being tied up, right? Sometimes our predispositions look like us being tied up. But sometimes it's just occupied. Jesus tells many parables about people being invited to the house of the Lord and, and people saying, I'm, I'm just too busy. I'm just too busy. But I'm not too busy to let the Holy Spirit use me not too busy I'm not too busy God and whatever I am tied to loose me now Lord now loose loose me now I receive a loose the same way you loose the woman with the issue of blood the same way you loose the woman who was bent over for years Lord loose me God so I can be used for your service Lord but I don't want to talk to you about Sunday everybody today is going to preach about Sunday there's value in Sunday. I'm not mad. There's value in Sunday. Um, but I want you to know the same crowd that shouts Hosanna on Sunday will shout crucify him on Friday. So don't get, don't, don't get too excited about your Sunday experiences. <laughs> Some of y'all know this was it. Sunday was our anniversary. I'm going to let you sit down. Just give me a second. Y'all like, Petey, we've been standing up for an hour. It's okay. If y'all was at the concert, y'all be standing up. Jodeci ain't even came out yet. They still in. They still in the back room fighting. They back there fighting. Uh, Jesus.
Jesus, the same crowd that was shouting on Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna. By Friday, they were shouting, crucify him. We will take Barabbas, crucify Jesus. So I, I don't really want to focus on Sunday today. I actually want to focus on Saturday. Something significant happened on yesterday. Some of y'all know we had, the, we had our anniversary yesterday, last Sunday. It was so wonderful. It was so great. Right after that anniversary on Monday, we got hit with some drama. Boom. Just like that. Boom. Like, you, you know, in a, you, unexpected drama is tough. That's why when you stomp your toe, that's, that's when you know if you're a Christian or not. That's when you learn. That's when you learn. You don't know if you're a Christian. This is Sunday morning. It is the sweetest night. That ain't nothing. You learn when you didn't expect to hurt yourself, and then all of a sudden something. By Monday, I was like, oh. Sunday, it was all wonderful. It was all good. We were popping those things. Some of y'all seen the pictures. It's confetti everywhere. The landlord's mad at us. It's over again. That's why we need our own building. Uh, don't amen, give. We'll get there. Okay, all right. All right. Thursday was my birthday. So one, oh, no, 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 don't do that, don't. I'm up again on Thursday, Kevin. I'm up. Like me in the stock market, too. That's the same thing. I got money today. Friday, bang, back down. I'm broke again. We eating ramen noodles. <laughs> Thursday was good. Friday, unexpected news. Here it comes. Friday, I went Friday night. I had a little party, a little shindig. It was, a, no, don't worry. It was just a little, just a little gathering. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't, you didn't miss nothing. But Saturday, right to my gut. Can you celebrate on your Saturdays? Everybody partying on Friday. Everybody's worshiping on Sunday. Can you celebrate on your Saturday? I'll give you one more theological tip. I'm going to read this. I promise I'm going to let you sit down. But the Bible says for at the time that Jesus died, they were preparing the Passover lambs. And, and on Saturday, uh, it, Friday night into Saturday would have been the Passover time. And the Bible says it was completely silent. Wait, man. You were supposed to be the king of kings. Celebrated on Sunday, silent on Saturday. Everybody's screaming, it's a party on Sunday. Silent on Saturday. What am I supposed to do now? When I pray and I pray, Antoine, and I pray and I can't hear from God. What am I supposed to do now? When I, when, I, when I pray and I fast, I do whatever everybody tells me to do, but I still, I can't, I can't get a breakthrough. And some of y'all been in a Saturday season so long that you think this is, this is how your life is supposed to be. I want to talk to you about what happens on Saturday. Can we do that? Then six days before the Passover came to Bethany. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany. Where Lazarus was, which had been dead, but had been risen from the dead. I need you to get that. I need you to remember that during your, during your difficult seasons. Remember the time when you got rose up. 
Oh, y'all not ready for church today. Y'all not ready. Y'all sung too much. You got to remember the time when you got rose up. And the time when you're feeling down, when you're feeling destitute, when you're feeling alone. Can you go back in your mental? Can you get your mind back to the last time you were down and God lifted you up and say the same God that lifted me up then? He came to see about me. He came to Bethany to see about me. And then they made him a supper. And Martha was working. Lazarus was chilling. Three. Then Mary took a pound of ointment. Spikenard. Very costly. Very costly. And she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor. I love the King James Version, odor. <laughs> the odor <laughs> of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, this corny brother, <laughs> Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, <laughs> which would eventually betray him. He said this, he said, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? I love the Bible. Verse six says, this he said, not because he cared for the poor. <laughs> he care about no poor people because he was a thief. Oh, I could go deep right here. I'm going to leave it. And he had the bag. <laughs> and bear what was put therein. What, what that mean? It means that he was still out the bag. Some of us can't get the bag because we still out the bag. I could really preach this. Because you think that all that's in your bag is yours truth is there's a part in the bag that doesn't belong to you I'm preaching real good <laughs> the Bible says he was still out the bag that's why the bag won't grow because you're stealing out of it I didn't make this up. will a man rob God but you have that's what it says. Malachi 3 but you have this he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the bag and bare what was in it therein. Then Jesus said, leave her alone. Lord, I love that Jesus will come to my defense. I love our servant God who will come to my rescue when I'm feeling destitute, when I'm feeling down. Leave her alone when, when, when everybody is against you, when they, when they rise up against you. The Bible said the Lord will lift up a standard. Leave her alone. Cause this is about the day of my burying she has kept this for the poor you will always have but me you will not father we love you we give you glory help me help them in jesus name amen amen look at somebody and say the cost of the oil come on you can have your seat so I want to continue a conversation and, and, and I have to say forgive me to my staff because we're supposed to be in a different series. <laughs> supposed to be. Everybody keep asking me, when are we going to start Unstoppable? I, mean, I, I, I wish I wanted, to, I wanted to start it. But I got into this, this, this space of oil and I need to stay here for a second. We talked about this young lady last week. If you were here last week, um, thank you for coming back again. Uh, we talked about this young lady who, who, when everything was down, when everything was lost, when she didn't have anything, she went back to the oil. Sometimes you need somebody in your life to remind you about what you got. Some of y'all, that's why this, you can't say amen to this because you don't got those kind of friends. You don't have those kind of friends. All your friends are go along to get along friends. You tell them you're going to quit, they say, oh, yeah, girl, I probably would too. I'm leaving the church. Yeah, I understand. I probably would. But I don't hang around quitters. I don't. Uh, no, no, don't, don't, don't. Oh, me. 
I don't. When somebody tells me they're going to quit, I say, oh, no, you can't quit. What about all the things you prayed for? What about what you have been asking God for? You have, have you seen it yet? Because until you see it, you should not faint until you see the glory of God that's promised. So, oh, it's okay for your smattering of applause, but you need somebody in your life that's going to tell you, no, go back to your cupboard. Go back to your cupboard and get that oil out. God is not done with you yet. There is more inside of you. Don't run away from what God is trying to do truth is there is no more beautiful thing anywhere else if you recognize that the oil is in you wherever I am the oil is, oh y'all don't hear me wherever I show up if I'm at this job the oil's there if I'm at that job the oil's there if I'm in this conversation the oil's in that conversation if I'm I, I, I gotta be around people who got the look at somebody and say where's your oil Where's your oil? Go back and get it. Go back and find it. That thing, that tenacity. Some of y'all have given up your tenacity. I'm going to help you today. You have given up your tenacity. And and what happened is you've let the embarrassment of the crowd keep you from getting to your promise. You're so worried about what everybody's going to think. What everybody's going to think. How everybody feels. But I can't worry about what everybody's going to think because everybody's not going to be there when I'm down. Everybody's not going to be there when I need to. Only Jesus is going to be there. And so I will press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm not stopping. I'm not quitting. Are you crazy? I'm going to march on. I'm stronger than you know. I'm stronger than I know. And the truth is... that you get the weariest right before you get your second win. Some of y'all, you quitting at a half marathon. But if you quit at 13.5, some, some of y'all don't know nothing about marathons. You're like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> a marathon is usually 26, 26 miles. Point, ooh, excuse me, point two. I'll let you know I, I ain't running no marathon. I just Googled this. <laughs> if you quit at 13.5, if you quit at 18.7, if you quit at 21.3, you wasted 21.3 miles. I want you to get that in your head. Somebody going to talk you into you wasted all that you wasted eight years. You wasted it for what? Sometimes, sometimes you can get so deep into a thing. I'm, I'm preaching. Sometimes you can get so deep into a thing that it's further to go back than it is to just finish the race. And the long walk back is much more difficult than the few more miles that you have to endure. So Jesus is going to Bethany. What does this have to do with anything? I'm gonna help you, I'll, I'll show you. Jesus goes to Bethany. Now, Bethany is not Jerusalem. Let's just get, I want y'all to get this scriptural understanding. Bethany is not Jerusalem. It's nothing close. If Jerusalem is where it is, Bethany is where it ain't. (laughs) If Jerusalem is the dominion, Bethany is the East Terrace. (laughs) If if Jerusalem is the North Side, I don't don't get in trouble for this. It's okay. Some people are like, no, I'm from the south side. Don't tell me. This is not... <laughs> Jerusalem is the, is the best place that you have to offer. Bethany is not. But for some strange reason, Jesus loves to spend time 
in Bethany. That should make you feel good. That should make you feel good. That should make you feel good because everybody else is thinking, oh, Jesus loved to spend time in the dominion. Jesus is, is soaking in a pool somewhere in the dominion. Jesus is, but no, no, no. Jesus is looking for Bethany. Jesus is on his way to Bethany. He's always on his way to the worst places to the worst places to the worst places to the worst place the anointing doesn't just reside in the best places it's flow you gotta know what kind of God you serve he said I flow down to the worst places I flow down in fact there's some people in here from the worst places they can raise their hand and tell you Jesus found me in the worst place Jesus found me in the worst I wasn't perfect I didn't have it all together it's not by works anyway it's by faith by faith I have been saved by faith I have been rescued and Jesus slowed down he found me in the worst place he didn't find me on the stage he found me at the club y'all can't testify he didn't find me up here anybody could testify he found me in Bethany just say he found me in Bethany girl he found me in Bethany he found me in Bethany I wasn't perfect I wasn't perfect my life wasn't perfect Jesus but he found me he found me he found me he comes looking for me he comes looking for oh thank you Jesus he comes looking for me You got to know some of the story, okay? I, I don't have time to give it all to you. But when, when Lazarus was sick the first time. <laughs> See, that's the problem. We think we get saved and then we never get sick again. I get saved, but sometimes I get sick. I got saved, but sometimes I get sick. I thank God that God don't give up like, on me like you do. I thank God that God won't quit on me like you do. He know I'm going to get sick again. Listen, when Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, did he not know he was going to die again? He wasn't doing it for Lazarus' benefit. If I was Lazarus, I would have been mad. Wait a minute, man. I was, I was on the streets of gold. Kicking up gold dust, chilling everybody. Oh, y'all, I'm, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I ain't going to be at the funeral of somebody I know who is saved talking about, bring them back, Lord. No, 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 no. The Bible says that babies should cry to be born here. And, and, and old folks should be glad to move on to the next. I know that's morbid. I know y'all don't want to talk about that. So when Lazarus comes out of that grave, when he comes kicking out of that grave, I imagine he was sort of kicking and screaming like player. I was pulled down here. I'm rich up there. Oh, Lord. I, had, I was a leper down here, an outcast. Nobody loved me. Nobody cared about me. Everybody, when I got in the master's arms, all of a sudden, something beautiful happened. And you called me out of that to make an example out of me? Oh, well, use me, Lord. I'm the donkey. But when Mary called Jesus, she called Jesus, and the Bible says she was confident that he was on his way because Jesus loves Bethany. He loves Bethany. And then we get this scene in Bethany. This is one of the best scenes in the Bible to me. Like, this, is, this scene blessing my heart. The Bible says that Martha was working. <laughs> she was working her tail off. She's working. She working. She didn't. She she take pleasure in it. And, and Lazarus is chilling. And Mary, well, Mary's worshiping. Every church is going to be full of Martha's, Mary's, and Lazarus's. You're welcome. If you want to start a church right now, you can go do it right now. You need Martha's. You can't start a church around Martha's. Everybody in there like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And nobody getting nothing getting done. The electricity not getting paid. 
lights getting cut off is it's hot so when you've been to them good churches where it's a good worship but there ain't no electricity there's no air conditioning working it's all Mary's no Martha's Martha got to say no no y'all spend too much money on this stop stop this is this is not the re- you need Martha's you need Martha's to make sure y'all can put a down payment on something later on I'm trying to help you right here. You need Martha's in your life. Listen, you need, you need Martha's. Martha's is the person you go to their house, they never sit down. They always taking their, they all, they just, you like sit down. You making me nervous. Can I help you at all? No, girl, I'm good. Every, everything's good. Y'all all right? You don't know that she's she not just working. It's her purpose. She's not satiated if she's not serving. She's not satiated. She got to find something for her hands to do. And sometimes, whoa, Jesus, sometimes you'll get frustrated. Not because you got too much to do, but because you don't have enough to do. We got to be worried about idle hands. Idle hands. Some of us too busy to complain. I'm so busy. They got to bring me a food. They got to bring me food and say, did you eat today? I'm like, well, I don't think so. I'm about to faint. I'm up on a ladder. <laughs> they like, man, sit down. It's my purpose. It's my purpose. I'm a Martha. It's in my spirit. Problem is, I got a little Mary too. So that's why we could just worship for an hour. I don't have to preach at all. I, 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 not one bit. You know, some, some preachers love to preach. I don't. Preaching is a necessity to pastoring. It's my only way to speak to all y'all. It's my bullhorn. But I care more about you, you, than I do about this. It's just, and it's no offense to anybody. It's just, but when we get to a place of worship, oh, God, I forget. The clocks get all messed up. They start looking at me like, what you going to do with this? Time's up. That, time, that clock always negative. I think it's just broke. <laughs> Tiff's like, no, it's not broke. It works. It's working. <laughs> I'm a worshiper. It's in my heart to worship. It's in my heart to worship. And a lot of times, you can serve in silence. But as a worshiper, your platform gets lifted. I'm going to talk more about that in a second. But Martha's serving. Lazarus is chilling. That's what he do. My wife said this yesterday. Big chilling. I said, what you going to do? I said, what you got to do today? And she said, nothing. I'm big chilling. (laughs) I I was like, I never even heard that. I was like, what? Big chilling? She said, big chilling. She kept emphasizing, big chilling. <laughs> Shoot, I said, you ain't saying nothing to me then. I tore the covers off the bed. And... <laughs> big chilling. I'm big chilling. <laughs> Lazarus is the one Jesus loves. He's the one that's sick. He's a leper. He's sick. But he's the one who Jesus loves. Jesus loves the sick ones. No, no, look at the twister. He loves Martha. He loves Martha. He loves Martha. She works. She does everything that needs to be done. She makes sure all the candles is lit. Everybody, she makes sure, she literally makes sure it's lit. That's what her job is. Y'all, that was good. Y'all don't give me no props. It's lit. The, okay. Mary's worshiping. She's got it. God is fine and fine. She's, she's. But Jesus loves Lazarus. The church loves Martha. The church loves Mary. But Jesus loves. Lazarus, so much so that even though Jesus had the power to raise him from the dead, he still was sad that he died. Yes. 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 
Who is it in your life, in your family, that Jesus is sad that they're dying? Who is it, Mary, why you're not getting enough props for your song? Why nobody said thank you for your service? But Lazarus is dying. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is your brother, your sister, your cousin? The one you talk to about everything but Jesus? Because that's the one Jesus cares about. Jesus loves Lazarus. But this sermon is not about Lazarus. It's not about Martha. It's about Mary. There's something about You knew where I was going. You got to do it. It's low-hanging fruit. You got to just. Something about Mary. And in the time where Martha is serving, Lazarus is big chilling. Mary comes in and just disrupts the whole party. This is where I was going earlier. See, you can't, if you're going to be a Mary, you, 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 you can't be worried about how people feel, what they think. See, Mary exists during a time where women don't, they, they, they quiet. They be quiet. They don't say nothing. They sit in the back. All the men sit in the front and the women sit in the back. And all of a sudden, Mary starts doing something. Tab, she starts doing something crazy. She starts pushing her way. I wonder who here is just pushing their way through. Wait a minute. I wonder who got it, who got the spiritual authority, the spirit, not even the authority yet. Maybe, maybe you just got the spiritual ambition to say, no, 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 I'm here. No, 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 God, use me. I, I have something valuable. There's something valuable inside me, and I don't care what people think about. It. I'm gonna make my way to the front. You know, you know, can I tell can I tell y'all something? You know how I get in trouble the most? You know how I get in trouble? I don't know why I get in trouble. I don't know why this would get me in trouble. But I, you know how I get in trouble the most? is when a new person come here and they're not willing to just stay in the back. So they start coming close. They start figuring out their way to my office. And next thing you know, they working close to me. And they, work, they working here side by side. And the people who still sitting back here. I don't even think this is a note in my sermon. I just... This is my therapy. I just want to tell y'all. How. And then people come get mad at me because a person found their way to the front. Don't get mad at me. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Because they, because you could have did what they doing. You got to find your way to the front. You got to find your way. Don't let nobody keep you in the back. You got to find your way to the front. Oh, I, I go to the parades here. This is the whole thing. You go to the parades here. It's wonderful. If you've never been to the parade, man, go to the parade. It's, it's wonderful. Everybody say it ain't nothing to do in San Antonio. Then when we're doing something in San Antonio, I never see you at it. <laughs> it's just the taste of New Orleans. That's it. You go to taste it. That's it. <laughs> so all kinds of stuff happens. But if you really want to see something at the parade, you got to make your way to the front. Yes, sir. People just, I don't know what they're doing right here. I really don't care. Oh, I'm going to make my way to the front. Yes, Everything that I want to see is on the other side of this, so I got to make my way. What are y'all, what, what, so I press toward the mark of the high car. See, you got to, oh, you got to understand what it means to press in, what it means to go forward when everybody else is retreating or when everybody else is backing up. God has been too good to me for me to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to move my way to the front. I'm going to make my way to where God is. I'm going to make my way to the altar. I'm going to find my way to the altar. God has something for me God has something for me I'm not just coming here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday I want I want to see what God can do with me so I'm gonna give myself to him I'm gonna present myself to him so Mary starts making her way to the front she makes her way to the front and everybody notices that she has this jar now you got to know something about Mary 
Mary used to be a hoe. Oh. A sex worker. Some people th theorize, some people theorize that maybe it was the woman who got found in the place of adultery. We don't really know. Maybe it was that woman that got, got rescued. The Bible said that they was about to stone her. What happened to him? They don't know what happened to him. He, he disappeared. But they brought her out. And they was about to stone her. And we theorize that, that this could have been that same person. There's, there's some theological debate about it. I'm, I'm not here to try to solve a 2,000 year old problem. But who, who rescued you enough to make your way to the front? To find where you're supposed to be. I got purpose in this life. Just here? What do you mean? I'm not just here. I'm not some primordial goo evolved from a microorganism to a fish to a bird then somehow from a bird to a monkey it's ridiculous and then I'm just living into 70 years and boom I'm gone no God, God designed my life with purpose he said before my mama knew my dad Lord have mercy before Donnie knew Connie He already had a purpose and a plan and a design to give me a hope and a future and expect it in. Why am I going to waste my life just, just being? So much more for me. Long story short, she might have had some money. A little, little money. A little change. The Bible says she made her way with what she had. Her little oil. Now we, we know, we know, we know, bring me that oil, bring me the oil, just bring me the oil. We know that we use oil around here a lot, we use, we use a lot of oil. Next week I'm going I'm to give out some oil, I want you to have oil at your house. I want you to know what's in your house. You know what's in your house. We know that this oil, we, we pray over it, we consecrate it, but we, we, we bought this oil from Walmart. For $14. That's how much it cost us. Sometimes people say, you know, PD, I, I want your anointing. I have the same anointing you have. I'm going to start praying for people. I'm going to start laying my hands on them and say, Lord, let them re be reborn in the worst places San Antonio have to offer. Let, 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 him, let, let both his parents be on crack until he's 14 years old. Like, let, 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 oh, you, you want the anointing? Here it goes. You ready? Wow. You live in the crack house now. No, not like you live in the neighborhood where there is a crack house. Your house is the crack. You want the anointing? Here it is. You can't buy it for $14.99. Something, it costs me more. It costs me. It just, this is a representation of what it costs. I mean, you sitting next to people, but you don't know what it cost. It didn't cost the same. The fare to get here, the fare to get in this place, the fare to sit where they sit. You don't know how much it cost them. The Bible says she had a, a pint of oil that some people say was worth about uh, uh, 200, about 300 denarii. Denarii would have been a day's work. Like you work for a whole day and you get paid. What do you get paid? What do you, what, what do you get paid? Don't say it all out. <laughs> what do you get paid? And multiply it for one day. 
times 300. And that's what she brought to Jesus. Now, here's the problem. Everybody's number in here is different. The cost of your oil is different. Some of y'all say, oh, you know, I'll just take this much and time and time 300. Oh, that's not that much. Now, other ones of y'all said, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. You take one day and then time and time 300. That's a year's salary. What's that? What's that worth? But see, she was a prostitute. So what, what, was, what did a day's worth cost her? See, she wasn't working at the factory. She wasn't on a Zoom call. What did a day's work cost her? See, oil costs different for different people. Some of y'all, some of y'all, you, you, the oil you got, you pay for. And, it, and it's valuable. But some of y'all, the oil you got, you really pay for. And you got to say, no, no, no. My oil is too valuable to be wasted. My oil, that's why I can't just date anybody. Oh, let me help me. Let me help you. I can't just hang out with anybody. My oil's too valuable. I can't just be on the phone with anybody talking about everything. All the rumors, all the foolish, all the gossip. My oil's too valuable for this. Your oil might be as fine. My oil is too pricey to be on the phone talking about, oh, they don't like me. I got something to offer. Now, it's so what we pay for it, $14.99. Maybe what I pay for it, growing up in where I grew up, living how I live, being in the military, all that stuff. Well, she paid for it. Maybe she was beaten, bruised. <laughs> Tom. All right, y'all chill out back there. Okay? Y'all relax. Okay? Because I need to make this point. Somebody going to miss this. What she paid for it. What we paid for it. What I paid for it. But you're missing the big picture. You see, the olive paid the most. The olive paid the most for its oil. The olive had to be crushed. 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 I don't have time to waste. I'm being crushed for this oil. It's more, it's more valuable than you understand. I've been crushed for this. My life matters. I've been crushed for this. Why am I going to waste my life just living day to day? Go to work, go to sleep, go to work, go to sleep, go to... No, I've been crushed for this. I have purpose in my life. I'm going to allow myself to just be wasted. I've been crushed for this. I was going to show y'all an example, but I don't have time for this. There's a, how they would crush the olives is different from grapes because olives are tougher than grapes. Some of y'all got grape juice anointed. Grapes can be pressed. Paul said, I was pressed, but I wasn't crushed. That's how you get wine. You press. With olive oil, you can't just press it. You got to crush it. So you know what they do? They used to do, they would get a giant wheel. In some places, they still do it like this. They would get a giant concrete, they would, they would, uh, uh, they would hone a boulder into a wheel. And then they would tie that wheel to a jackass. Yes, okay. yes, and then he would step. And as he stepped, the follow crushed the olives. The path crushed the olives. And, 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 and we paid $14.99. I paid with the Wheelie Courts, with the, with the East Terrace. She paid. But 
the olive, it paid. So we don't know the cost of the oil in her alabaster box. But we do know that she moved through that crowd with intention of giving it away. Y'all come up here. I need, I need some help. Kevin, come up here. Jesus is sitting with Lazarus. That's good right there. Big chilling. Come on. And Mary finds her way with a bucket and with some oil. She finds her way to Jesus. She kneels down at his feet. Now I need you to get this. I'm gonna come here and talk. Stop that. I'm here to serve you. And while everybody's laughing, singing, talking. She said, no, 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 there's something that I have to do. I have to pour out on Jesus. So she takes his feet. She takes his shoes off. The Bible says she, she puts her, his foot in the bucket. She takes his other foot. Everybody's still having a good time because, you know, you have a good time at church. It's all wonderful. It's dinner and everybody's laughing. But she said, I got something to do. And the Bible says that she starts to take the water and she washes his feet with the water. She washes. See, you got to understand that this is what you would do for a lamb before you prepared it for the slaughter. You had to make sure that it was clean and spotless. And while everybody else was like, what in the world is she doing? Her and Jesus knew. See, I, I, I don't have to explain it to you. Me and Jesus know. I don't have to have a conversation about it. Me and Jesus know. I don't have to tell you why I still go there. Me and Jesus know. I don't have to tell you why I love Jesus, why, why I'm serving. I don't have to tell you why I go there every single Sunday and I don't miss because I don't want to miss what God has for me. But, but Jesus knows. Jesus knows. Listen, you know what else Jesus knows? He knows the cost. He knows how much it costs. Oh, y'all don't hear me right here. He knows how much it costs me to have this. He knows how much. You think it was $14.99, but you don't realize how much it cost me to have the oil. People still theorize to this day, there is theological conversation about how much money. And I think it's foolish because no one knows. Only Jesus knows the cost of my oil. And she begins to pour it out on him. She begins to pour it out on him because there's nothing more valuable in this world than what God has done for me. He saved me from something. You have no idea what he saved me from. And there's nothing more valuable in this world. So everything I have, everything I have, I'm going to pour it out on my Jesus. The Bible says she began to pour it out so much so that a fragrance filled the room. A fragrance filled the room. She said, she said that, that her, her tears and her sweat, it all starts to get mixed into the bucket. See, you, you think it's a beautiful thing, but it's a difficult thing. Oh, it's so sweet. But, you know, but it's also hard. Living for God is also difficult. Tears so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word that's the problem right there to take him at his word that whatever he said about me is real is true is right is righteous whatever he said about me and the 
Bible says that she took her oil and she poured it out on Jesus. She poured it out on Jesus. See, you got to understand that back then, they didn't have an embalming process. So the best they could do, they, they, they tried to just take out as much blood as possible. Can I, y'all, are y'all with me? That's too. And then they would just oil your whole body. And she's, she's, she's starting the process on Saturday. Because by the next Saturday, he'd be buried. She's starting the process of embalming early. Did she know? I, I don't know if she know. I don't know if she knew. But what she did know is I can't hold this no longer. What I have for God, what I have to pour out on Jesus, I got to pour it out right now. I can't wait another day. I can't wait another moment. I can't wait till the next service. I can't wait till Yvonne stands up. I can't wait till the music starts playing. I got to give Jesus what I have to give him. Can't wait for another Sunday. Is PD preaching this week? Because I ain't coming to PD not preach. I can't wait to pour out my oil. Because I pay for this. I pay for it. I pay for it with tears and nobody was watching. I pay for it in quiet moments when nobody, when, when you, you think she got stoned. Oh, I, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm going to pour out my oil. I have something valuable in me. And I can't be worried about what you think about it. Amen. So I'm going to pour out my oil, my love, my praise, my adoration. I'm going to pour it out on Jesus. All that I have. 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 Through pain, through ridicule, through being lied on. Oh, I'm mixing in my testimony with hers. The Bible said they talked about her right in her face. Right in her face. He said, you stupid lady. You could have did so much more with that. She said, no, there is no more that I could have done. There is no more than I could have done than to pour out my love. There. There's no more valuable use of my time. Hear me. Hear me. There is no more valuable use of my time. You wouldn't have liked me before this moment. You would not have liked me. You didn't know me back then. You don't know what this cost me. You don't know the pain I suffered for this. And I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to pour it out. I'm going to pour it out. I'm going to pour it out. Pour it out on you, Jesus. I know Sunday is coming. It matters what you do on your Saturday. It matters what you do on your on your Saturday. It matters what you do when it's silent. When you don't get to tell your side of the story. 
and you don't get to defend yourself. I love that I serve a God who will speak for me. It's a lot that I can say, Mama Shawana. It's a lot that I can say. But they might get mixed up with my tears. They might get mixed up with my heart. So God said, you don't have to say nothing. I'll speak, oh Lord have mercy. I'll speak on your behalf. And you know what he told them? You know what he told them? He said, shut up. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. He said, because you could have, any of y'all could have done what she doing. In fact, that's why you're mad. It wasn't your idea. There's, there's three properties to oil. I wanted to give you this earlier, but get this. First thing is, oil is protective. It's protective. They would put oil on animals to, to keep insects off of them. The insect Oh, this is good right here. The insect, its wings are not strong enough to, to dally around in the oil. So, so insects avoid oil. I'm preaching. Insects, they, 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 their wings are not strong enough. If they get a little oil on their, on their wings, they can't fly anymore. So insects stay away from oil. Listen, listen, if you got a lot of insects around you, you don't got enough oil on you. Oh. Oil is a protective mechanism. It's, a, it's also, it's a prescription mechanism. Pastor Dante, what are you talking about? Well, if, 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 if a, for some reason, scratching that itch, An animal would get a sore. The oil worked like a bomb. It was, it was homemade neosporin. The Bible calls Jesus the bomb in Gilead. He's not just a protection mechanism. He's a prescription mechanism. He is my medicine. He is my medicine. He is my medicine. When the whole world comes against me, the Bible don't say I lift up a standard for myself. It says he, he will lift up a standard. But see, this was pre-Jesus when we thought God would just lift up a standard. What we found out at the cross is that Jesus is the standard. He will stand in front of your problem. He will stand in front of your situation. He will stand in front of you. He will take the arrows. He will take the blame. Stop trying to convince people. Just take the medicine. It's a bomb in Gilead. Here's the last one. It's, it's preserving. See, what Kevin doesn't know what maybe his grandma knew or his great grandma knew is that that oil going to be on his feet for a long time. If he don't wash that oil off, his feet will shine for weeks. They'll be preserved. They'll be preserved. That dryness, it's not enough dryness in the world to dry up the preserving power of the oil. Some of y'all won't understand it until I say it like this. He a keeper. He's a keeper of my soul. He will keep me. He will keep me. When I feel like I'm down, when I feel like I'm dried out, when I don't have anything left, I look down at my feet and recognize the oil is still on me. The oil is still on. It never left me. It never left my family. In fact, some of y'all are still here because the oil that your grandmother put on your... The oil that your mama 
to put on your family. The oil that your father prayed over your family. That's the only reason you're still here. It's preserved you. It's preserved you. It's preserved you. It protects you. It's a prescription for you. It's a preserver. You know the reason I didn't even fight back? Because I've been preserved. The reason I didn't say nothing back is because I've been preserved. The reason I, I haven't had to make one argument back is because there's a preservation over my life. And I'm here to tell you that there's a preservation over you. Look down. Look down. Look down. There's a preservation over your life. Two things. I'm done. Two things would happen. Number one, you would have that oil on you. They didn't have regular, you know, they didn't have hard water. They didn't have these sorts of things. That oil would be on you for weeks, preserving you, protecting you as a prescription, a balm for you. And one more side effect, it had a scent. It had a scent to it. And everywhere you went after that, you smelled like nard. <laughs> That's why you're ostracized, you smell. It's nard. It's nard. But you gotta know it's for a greater purpose. I'm just going to receive my, I'm going to receive whatever, whatever God has for me. I'm going to receive that. And it's going to get me through my Saturday. Just like last week. Celebrated on Sunday. The next day, Jesus would go triumphantly into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. The same thing that pulls the stone that crushes the olives. He said, this is my vehicle. The one that leaves a trail of crushing. Celebrated on Sunday. We celebrated on Sunday. Had some good Monday, Tuesdays. We had some good Monday, Tuesdays. By Friday, crucified. You know what I learned, Mama? I think my mama taught me this. You know what I learned? Sunday's coming. Yes. So my in my granny's vernacular, if I can hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, then victory, victory shall. They crucified Jesus on Friday. Saturday was completely silent. Quiet. Silent. I'm praying for those of you who are in your Saturday season. I just want to remind you of one thing. Sunday's coming. Bible says, guess who? Mary. She goes to the tomb early on Sunday morning. Guess who? Mary. She didn't have to fight her way through anymore because all the hangers on had left. I'm in a place in my life and ministry where I want to know who's going to come to the tomb. I know everybody's going to be there on Sunday. Who's going to come to the tomb? Who's going to come check on us? Who's going to come to the tomb where we are? 
I know, remember, Mary called Jesus to Bethany to save Lazarus. Are y'all with me today? But the beautiful thing is that when Jesus is in the tomb, now Mary comes from Bethany to Jerusalem to go see Jesus who's still... Who's checking? And the Bible says that the stone is rolled away. And she starts to weep. And a man, a crazy figure, appears. And he says, Mary, why are you weeping? And she said, because I I had him, but I lost him. I had him, but I lost him. Somebody has stolen Jesus. And he said, daughter and she said master I think she recognized his voice but I also think she recognized his scent because what I had poured out on him is still the aroma is still in first person to see Jesus was the person on her knees pouring her oil out on him. The first person to see him rose from the grave is the first person who got down low enough to pour her oil on him. I want to pray for you. Even in your silent Saturdays that you will see Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you glory and honor. I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice, God. I pray for those silent Saturdays, God. I pray that they can have peace, that they can big chill, because you got this. You got it under control, God. And I pray, God, that, that, that something today spoke to their spirit, God. Now, Lord, I ask, I I, I beg, give them a sign of your love, sign of your peace, God. Lord, as we lift our hands, God, all over the room, as we lift our hands, we receive your love, God. We receive your love, God. And I thank you for every soul who has poured out oil, God. Every vessel who has poured out oil, God, because I believe you're doing something new in them, Lord Jesus. And just like the woman with the oil in the cupboard, if they start to pour, God, I believe that you are replenishing. I believe that you are replenishing their oil, God. I believe you are filling them up, God. I believe you are filling them up, God. Fill your people, God. Fill your people, God. Let them feel a fresh wind over this place, God. Let them feel a fresh anointing, God. Oh, over this place God and we believe God we believe Lord Jesus we believe God we believe God that we'll see you on Sunday God that you'll raise up triumphantly so until we see you again here's our worship here's our oil here's our oil we give it to you God in Jesus name Amen